So getting back to our trick from the Necron. We're now to the late distal convoluted tubule. And this is a site where we're going to have hormone influence. In the late distal convoluted tubule, I want you to know that it's mostly aldosterone that will target the cells here. Aldosterone is released by the adrenal cortex, the outer layer of the adrenal cortex. And aldosterone tells the late distal convoluted tubule So they reabsorb more salt and water. <clears throat> That's what happens in the late distal convoluted tubule. There are two different kinds of cells there. It's the principal cells that respond to aldosterone. You do not need to worry about the alpha intercalated cells. I'll say that. Physiology. They're fine. They have everything to do with acid base balance. And again, we're back to cuboidal epithelium. When we actually get to the papillary ducts down here, we're down to columnar epithelium. So here are the principal cells. They respond to aldosterone. Aldosterone, you, know, you remember this, the sodium potassium ATPase. Aldosterone stimulates that. Aldosterone also causes the apical side of the cells facing the filtrate to reabsorb more sodium and water follows it, but it comes at a price. You must pay potassium. You must secrete potassium. <clears throat> so it reabsorbs sodium, secretes potassium, and water follows sodium. ADH stands for antidiuretic hormone. That hormone is released by the posterior pituitary, but does the posterior pituitary make ADH. Do you remember your banana boat song? How can you remember the two hormones that the hypothalamus makes but stores in the posterior pituitary? Sing your banana boat song. You know, Deo, Deo. Do you remember that? Well, instead, you're going to sing Neo, Neo. N is for neurohypothesis. That's your posterior pituitary. A is ADH, and O is oxytocin. Do you remember what oxytocin does? Smooth muscle contraction, but for what? For whom? Who? I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Do men have oxytocin? For what purpose? They're not in labor. <laughs> oh, I like it when my smooth muscle contracts too, especially when I'm not in labor. It's for orgasm, isn't it? Yes! <laughs> I, I know, it just clicked. Now that we're talking about sex. Like, <laughs> yes! <laughs> yes, it is for smooth muscle contraction, not just for labor and delivery, but also for expression of, of breast milk, not the making of breast milk, but let down. And it's also for orgasm. So we love our oxytocin, low amounts, don't we? High amounts, ladies, do you like it in high amounts? No. Low amounts, yes. So remember your banana boat song. Nao, nao. ADH will make you swell. Oxytocin, you scream like hell. <laughs> Birthing or orgasm, you're screaming either way. <laughs> Works. So ADH targets your collecting ducts and your medullary ducts. They are typically not permeable to water, but when ADH is around, they are now permeable to water, and those ducts suck more water out of your filtrate, making your urine as concentrated and scant as it can. Again, obligatory water loss, you're obliged to lose a half a liter a day. So what would your urine look like if you're very dehydrated and your ADH levels are high, trying hard to save you from death? This one? Yes, this one. Again, is that what you want to drink when you're lost on a hike and dehydrated? No, no.
No, it is not. It's not as bad as drinking seawater, but it's a losing battle nonetheless. Yes, Bear Grylls is an idiot. Do I have you convinced? Yes. Um, so if ADH is around, is it the collecting depth that's going to absorb more water, or the weight that's So if you read a well-written book, ADH and aldosterone target the principal cells. I do not want you, I do not, I, I like boundaries. Aldosterone, late distal convoluted tubule. ADH, collecting duct slash medullary duct, okay? That is not 100% of the truth, but for testing purposes, it makes very nice, clean boundaries, okay? And in your homework packet, you have a picture, and there are questions like that, right? So I have to set up those boundaries for those questions. Normally, the collecting duct and medullary duct cells are not permeable to water. But when ADH is around, there are pores specifically for water put on both sides of the cell membrane, the apical side facing the filtrate and the basal lateral side. So water can now go from your filtrate through the cell, out the back door, and back into the bloodstream. Without ADH, those aquaporins are not inserted. Without ADH, you're peeing like a racehorse. Copious amounts of dilute urine. <gasps> Guess what inhibits ADH? Alcohol. Alcohol. <gasps> and that, my loves, is the reason why if you drink too much alcohol, you will become so dehydrated that the next day you have a hangover. And you have a hangover because, and I told you this, you make cerebral spinal fluid from your plasma. And if you are dehydrated, you don't make as much cerebral spinal fluid, then your brain isn't as buoyant. And remember, the meninges are innervated. Now we understand, huh? Mm -hmm. Yep, yep, yep. Ureters. Ureters are a continuation off of the renal pelvis. Again, the urine is dripping out. So this is the collecting duct, medullary duct, papillary duct, renal papilla with the holes, and your urine is dripping out. Drips through the minor calyx to the major calyx to the renal pelvis to the ureter, enters into the bladder, and the ureters enter in at an angle. And the reason why that angle is important is because when the urine drips into your bladder, it can't, it shouldn't, under normal circumstances, dam back up all the way up to your kidneys. If it does that, then your kidneys, again, can't filter. And that would be post-renal failure. So this oblique entry is really important. <clears throat> they also need to be able to expand quite well. <clears throat> so they have a mucosa <laughs> that is transitional epithelium. Have you done that one for your histology yet? It looks like an accordion. And the cells look like they're folded back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, like a folded map or the accordion. And when they're folded back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, like a folded map, it, it can expand. So that means transitional epithelium is very good for expansion, like when you have a lot of urine going through your ureters. There is a muscularis, like a tunica media. That smooth muscle can contract on the urine to help push it down to your bladder. There are two layers to it. This is going to be a common theme when we get to our GI tract, an outer and an inner layer. The only issue is which one is the circular and which one is the longitudinal, because that changes. So in the ureters, the inner is longitudinal and the outer is circular. In the digestive tract, it's reversed. And then adventitia, which is connective tissue. The bladder is a temporary storage site for urine until it's socially acceptable to go pee. The Bladder is also lined with transitional epithelium, and it can distend and expand greatly. 
it's very uncomfortable when you think your bladder is full, but usually when you start thinking, oh, my bladder's full, I have to go to the bathroom, it's only about a third full. You got a lot more room there. It's just your mind saying, if you can go, you should go now. If you can go, you should go now. And I'm sure many of you in the wee hours of the night, your brain wakes you up going, if you should go, you should go now. And then you argue back with your brain going, but it's so warm in here. I don't want to get out. And I actually argue back with my brain going, shut up. I know I have two thirds left of, of volume that I can work with. I'm going back to bed. So again, there's a mucosa, transitional epithelium. There's a submucosa where the mucosa has to anchor into. That's your dense, irregular connective tissue. There is a detrusor muscle. That's your muscularis, basically. Smooth muscle, and it's mostly under control of the parasympathetic division. When you pee, that's called micturition. So from now on, you don't say, because you're too highbrow and you're too classy. You don't say, I got to go pee. You don't say, I got to go to the washroom say, I need to engage in micturition. And no one will know what you're talking about. And then an outer um, fibrous adventitia. Um, speaking of bladder, the ureters are coming in obliquely. And when they come in, they actually enter down here, not up at the top. So they continue down on the back side of the bladder and then enter obliquely. There's an area inside the bladder where it's very smooth and it's triangular shaped and it's called the trigony. The other parts of the bladder have these macroscopic folds to them called rugi. And rugi are basically extra folds on top of the extra transitional folded epithelium. So it really gives this expansion effect. It can distend. Um, one wedding anniversary, Honey and I decided to go floating down Grand, the, down the Grand Canyon, down the Colorado River, and it was like a 10-day expedition. The first day, we get on our little pontoon boats and we're floating down, we float for about four hours, and we decide, the guides say, we're pulling over, we're going to have lunch. And as we're having lunch, everyone's mingling and getting to know each other because we are going to be basically family for 10 days and pooing with each other on one common toilet. So you better get to know them. And I'm watching people get out of their pontoons, and there's this older man and his two daughters. I'd say they were in their 30s, mid-30s. And he, he's trying to get out of the pontoon boat, and he's struggling, kind of trips. He falls over. I'm thinking, well, it is a big, it's pretty hot. But as he's trying to get up, he's, he's weak. He's very weak. He's very feeble. I'm like, oh, that's <laughs> not going to be good. So I'm thinking, yeah. I hope there's a nurse or a doctor because this isn't good. And I go up to Honey. He's eating his sandwich. And I said, do you think there's a nurse or a doctor on this trip? Honey's eating his sandwich. He says, why? I said, because that guy over there, I don't think he's going to make it. It's too hot for him. I think he has heat exhaustion from the looks of him. And Honey comes up to me and goes, mind your own damn business. Don't, don't do what you usually do. Mind your own business. Stand with me. I'm like, no, I'm just I'm going to go over here. <laughs> so I go over to the guides, and they went, well, do you think there's a nurse or a doctor on this trip? And the guides go, uh, why? I said, because that guy over there, I don't think he's going to make it. And the guides quickly Ma'am, we are trained to handle any emergency situation. And even if we have a nurse or a doctor on this trip, this is their vacation. They are not obligated to help anyone. It's up to us. And I went, okay, so that guy over there is going to need your attention at some point on this trip. You might want to watch him. He's not doing well. And they basically said, go eat. <laughs> he looks fine. Go on. I'm like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Is this the same trip you got a spider web? Yep. 
So the first night, first night, we're all hunkering down. Daughters come through the camp with a flashlight. Is there a nurse or a doctor? Is there a nurse or a doctor? Is there a nurse or a doctor on this trip? I grab my flashlight, shine it on my face. I roll over to Honey going, <laughs> <laughs> and Honey reaches over to my head and starts to mush it into the sand. <laughs> Shut up, don't do anything. I'm like, I told you so. <laughs> Things settle down, the guides get up, things settle down. Minutes go by, girls come through again. Is there a doctor or a nurse? Is there a doctor? No one answers. Guides get up, things settle down. And I'm like, just waiting. Because during dinner, he didn't drink a damn thing. Not one thing. It was hot. It was very hot. So I'm like, he's not just got heat exhaustion. He is now entering heat stroke, and his kidneys are in failure. That He's not drinking, they're not filtering, we're, we're in trouble. Girls come through, is there a nurse or a doctor? And I turn on my flashlight, I said, I am not a nurse or a doctor. However, I've been watching your dad and my honey's, oh! <laughs> shush. I said, your dad seemed weak, we've been in the sun, he hasn't hydrated. And they said, well, Funny, he told us he, he's not peeing. I said, well, if he's not drinking and he's dehydrated, he can't make pee. Can't make pee. He he's got some, he's got he's been exposed to the heat. He's got, he, something's wrong. He needs you need to push fluids. So they go back to their dad and they're pushing fluids, push, and he's arguing with them. I don't know what he's saying exactly because they're from some country that ends in Ia of some sort, like Yugoslavia, Bulgaria. Russia, something like that. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. So, things settle down. They come through the, the camp again. And finally, this guy sits up and says, I'm a doctor. And he's an ob <laughs> So they're like, will you please come to our dad? He won't talk to us. There's something going on. Well, the reason why they were on that trip was it was his bucket list, and he was an end-stage prostate cancer. So when he told his daughters he wasn't peeing, what was lost in the translation between what he told them versus what she they told me was that not that he he wasn't peeing, it couldn't pee, and that's a big difference. <laughs> Prostate cancer grows through the man's prostatic urethra and basically occludes. Well, middle of the night, we can't get a helicopter down there. By the time dawn broke, we were in our pontoons. We broke camp. We had to float to a place where a helicopter could come land on the sand dune where the river kind of forked. We get them over there. The EMTs that arrived, they inserted a catheter. They drained two liters of urine. He was in pain in the morning. He was excruciating pain because his bladder was so full. So then Honey was like, I told you to mind your own business. Now, the urethra in females, very short goes through your urogenital diaphragm. Again, clitoris, urethra, vagina, anus, in that order. Very short, easy to insert a catheter with them, easy to pull it back out. Who's with me? Who wants to start a movie theater with me? High-end movie theater? No, I'm talking, not gonna just serve alcoholic beverages. We're not gonna just serve dinners in your seat. Yeah. Insert a catheter so you don't have to go to the bathroom. <laughs> does it hurt? It does hurt. Just no. Yes, it does. It's not going in. I don't have it. <laughs> not going in. And I'm speaking as a woman. I, I can't speak as a man. Figuratively, emotionally, it hurts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is big too. Going. Like, how definitely hurts more. <laughs> Yes, it does. That's why they try and distract you. Did they say, Brandon, can you 
point your toes as hard as you can for me, and you're like, yes, I, ah! <laughs> oh, this was all yeah. very traumatic for me. Yeah. <laughs> he blacked out a little. <laughs> for males, look how long their urethra is. That's a long ways to snake something all the way up to the <laughs> Three parts to their urethra. Here's the prostate, prostatic urethra, then the part that's going through the urogenital diaphragm. That's your pelvic bowl. So that's the, the uh, membranous urethra. And then this urethra has two names. It can either be called the penile urethra for obvious reasons, or it can be called the spongy urethra because it goes through a portion of the penis called the corpus spongiosa. But you'll learn more about Soon. Next week, we're going to talk about penises and Yay. vaginas <laughs> and how best to use them. It is not a G-rated show. You have questions, I have answers. You think you know how those things work. No, you do not. No, you do not. <laughs> If you are in the second group for your quiz, you are looking at your lecture three exams today.